Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, top five tips on how to pass your assignments really well. Uh, so my first tip would be, whichever module you're on, always talk to the module leaders about what they expect from the assignments. So you may read it in the handbook and maybe there's something in there you're not too sure about or you want to know if you can do it in a particular way or choose different aspects. Always talk to the module leaders because what you don't want to do is go off on a tangent or do it in a particular way and that way is not what they're looking for. Okay, so that would be my first tip. Talk to the module leaders. The second tip is, um, if you're doing this in paper format, if you've got your handbook printed out, then treat yourself to a couple of uh, fluorescent uh, highlighting pens. If you're doing it online in Word or um, a PDF document, uh, Adobe Acrobat, then use the highlighting pens there. Okay, so that's my second tip. The third tip is linked to number two, and that means choose one of those pens, get one of those colours, and read through the assignment guidelines and do everything, every single thing it tells you to do. So it's what you need to do. That's what you highlight in that colour pen. So say, for example, if the assignment guidelines say that you have to introduce a topic, well, therefore, you need to do an introduction. If it says give reasons for your choice, um, that's a rationale section. It may tell you to review the literature or draw out implications for practice and write a conclusion. If it mentions any of those things, you must do those. Because when you get your feedback uh, from the uh, module leaders or whoever marks the, the, the assignments, that's uh, the, the feedback form that we always have to follow. You've been asked to do this. We're asked, did they do it? OK, so you must do everything you're asked to do. My next tip would be to use the other colour pen and this time go over the assignment guidelines again and mark out everything in this second colour pen that tells you how you do it. So look out for what's called the academic ind indicator words and they could be things like analyse, critique, explore, um, explain, discuss, compare and contrast draw together or synthesize. So these are the academic indicator words and they'll be different for whether you're studying at levels four, five, six, seven or eight. OK, so the one uh, set of guidelines that you approach the guidelines one way, looking at what you must do. And the second way to look at them is how you do what you must do. OK, and the final tip would be check yourself against the grading criteria. So on your Moodle site or your course, uh, your course handbook, you're going to find the grading criteria. Now, they'll tell you what's required to pass at the pass mark. So if it's undergraduate studies, that's 40 percent. If it's postgraduate studies, that's 50. That'll tell you what to do. And when you look through the different categories, spot out some of the things it's saying. And it may be saying that, oh, well, it's sort of it's OK, but it's descriptive. And there are some errors, so typing errors. Now, those things you can eliminate so easily. Even when you look at spell check or grammar check um, as you're writing documents in Word or PowerPoint, it'll give you the squiggly little underline to show you when words aren't right. So really, there should be no excuse for that. And another common error that lots of people make is they may leave a little gap before they put a full stop. That's just not acceptable. So when you look at the guidelines, it'll say um, that there's evidence of good proofreading. Now, the way you demonstrate that is to make sure that there are no errors at all. OK, even when it comes to things like um, your referencing, if you've got tiny little re errors in referencing, that's going to keep your marks down. And one of the easiest errors that some people make, well, no, there's a few actually around referencing. One of them is they may have a different date in the text, the body of the text, as they've got on the reference page. So they might say somebody 2013 in the text, and then all of a sudden it says 2015 in the reference page. So make sure your referencing is absolutely perfect. And then when you look at the different levels, as you've got the grading criteria, so look at the level it takes to pass. So as long as you do everything you've been told to do and do it exactly how, then you've done enough to pass. But the next question is, how well are you going to pass? So look at that basic grade, whether it's the 40s or the 50s, 
And then look at the difference in wording in the 60s, the 70s and the 80s. So that's going to move from words like, well, it's descriptive to highly analytical. It's going to move from uh, concepts such as you've covered lots of the arguments to fully comprehensive or substantial. You've thought of everything here and look at the different ways in which you can do that. So say, for example, if you're doing an assignment and it asks you to critically explore a particular topic and you think, well, actually, there are so many issues I could address in this that will take me over and above the word count, then maybe what you could do is to do a mind map diagram and put that in as an appendix at the back. And then maybe in your introduction, you actually mention this. You say, well, look, this topic has got so many different aspects and different avenues I could have gone down. Please see appendix one. And in there, you'll see my initial critique of all the stuff that could have gone into this. However, for the sake of this assignment, I'm choosing to focus on this particular direction. OK, and that's part of your rationale then. You're saying why you're choosing it, how you're choosing it. So they would be my top five tips. OK, and if I were to add a sixth one to that, it's the final little picture I'll show you at the end of this video. OK, don't let anyone ever dull your sparkle. Thanks for listening. Ta-ta.